Okay, so this is topics in research methodology, uh, the basics of quasi-IVs. So topics, quasi-IVs, and a couple examples. So let's review experiments. Are experiments because they have a manipulated independent variable, control of extraneous variables, and a method of comparison. We've covered that in previous lectures. But what about experiments which aren't really experiments? What happens when we don't have manipulation of an independent variable? Well, that minor change causes some big effects later on. And what happens is we no longer have an experiment, but we have a quasi-experiment. Quasi is a term that means somewhat or kind of. So quasi-experiments are kind of like experiments, but not really. And what's going on is we're measuring. We still have an independent variable. But instead of manipulating it, we're measuring it. And this change from manipulation to measuring makes this IV a quasi-independent variable. That is, it's not a manipulated independent variable. It's kind of like an independent variable, but we're measuring it. We still have, maybe, control of extraneous variables and a method of comparison. Uh, but those topics are left for other lectures. Uh, or research methods, but what's really important right here is talking about the idea of the measured independent variable or the quasi-experimental variable, quasi-independent variable. So the independent variables are measured or observed, uh, so we are not changing anything, we're just measuring or observing and recording what we see and usually these independent variables then can then become subject and person variables. Doesn't have to be that case all the time. A lot of quasi uh, IVs are not person variables, but in many cases they are. And what's a person or a subject variable? Things such as gender or race, that is variables that are associated with a person. And it's very easy to look at someone and know which gender they, they are. Uh, and that's one way of observing uh, that subject variable. But then there's other subject variables like uh, self-esteem or extroversion or openness to experience. And these variables need to be measured using some type of psychometric test. So now that we're doing uh, quasi-experiments, we have some new names. Uh, independent variables are called quasi-independent variables now or quasi-IVs. Uh, we want to do that and use that term to remind us that this is not a manipulated independent variable, so it's not a true independent variable. Uh, also, sometimes we'll call these quasi-IVs a predictor variable because they're used to predict something else. And that something else could be a DV. We still use the term dependent variable uh, in quasi-experiments. Sometimes the term criterion variable is used. Uh, when we're dealing with quasi-experiments. And that's a term from uh, psychometrics when you're talking about predicting something and you want to know whether or not that caused a change or something, and so you have a criterion, and that's where we get the idea of criterion variable. And then finally, while we used to talk about the independent variable causes changes in the dependent variable in an experiment, we can no longer use that term cause with quasi-experiments. We have to talk about how they co-vary. That is, the quasi-independent variable co-varies with the dependent variable. And we'll never use the term cause, or we should never use the term cause, because that's logically unsound with a quasi-experiment. So let's look at the example. This is uh, Marshall et al. from 2015. Uh, the Big Five, self-esteem, narcissism as predictors of topics people write about in Facebook and status updates. And there's the abstract. You could take a look at it. Here's a bigger version. And why don't you go through it, because I'm going to ask you to do that in a second, uh, and identify the variables and identify what they're measuring, or measuring all variables, because this is a quasi-experiment, uh, and try to identify what you think are the quasi-IVs and the uh, dependent variables. Stop the uh, video and take a look. Okay, so as I said, 
what variables are they measuring, uh, what are the quasi IVs, and which were the outcome DV variables. And so uh, the variables that they were measuring, big five, self-esteem, narcissism, uh, these are the variables that they're measuring. And what are the quasi IVs? Uh, well, it appears that what they're thinking is that big five traits, openness to experience, neuroticism, extroversion, etc., self-esteem and narcissism cause uh, people to post different types of uh, Facebook posts and use different frequencies about posting on Facebook. So the quasi IVs are the big five and self-esteem and narcissism. And then most likely, unless you know, and I you would only know this until it, until you read the uh, uh, actual article, uh, the uh, criterion variables or the uh, DVs are going to be the topics that people are posting on Facebook and uh, how often they do that. When we're dealing with uh, you know measured variables like this, uh, we use a whole different set of statistics. And uh, that is based on the idea of Pearson's R. Pearson's R or R or the co coalition, correlation coefficient uh, is based on the idea that when you look at two variables, uh, the variables are related to each other and they're related to each other at different levels of strengths and in different directions. Two variables could be very strongly related to each other so that as one variable changes, the other variable changes in lockstep, or they could be weakly related to each other, as in when one variable goes up, the other kind of goes up just a little bit or doesn't change at all. Uh, and then we can also talk about the direction of the relationship. Uh, some variables are related, so as one variable gets higher, the other variable gets higher. Other variables are related in a way that one variable goes up as another one goes down. That's an example of a negative relationship, and the uh, you know, former example was of a positive relationship. And so that's the concepts behind Pearson's R. Uh, Pearson's R can be calculated when you take statistics, you learn how, uh, but it goes from an R value of negative one, indicating a perfect, a perfectly strong negative relationship between the two variables, to an R of zero indicating no relationship, to an R of one indicating a perfect positive relationship. And in terms of those sizes we're talking about, there are rubrics that we can use, that is uh, signposts or goalposts uh, to give us an idea about the strength of this relationship. And anything between zero and 0.3 is considered a small uh, you know, strength uh, when we're talking about a Pearson correlation, anything between 0.3 and 0.5 is considered a moderately strong relationship, and anything above 0.5 is considered a large relationship. And that's mainly just in psychology that these rubrics apply to. And also, the mirror opposite is true when we're talking about negative co uh, coalition, correlations. Uh, that is, uh, correlation between 0 and negative 0.3 is considered to be a small negative relationship, and then a correlation between negative 0.3 and negative 0.5 is considered to be a moderately strong negative relationship, etc., so on. And these types of relationships can be graphically illustrated in scatter plots. Uh, and scatter plots are where we have one variable on the x-axis and one variable on the y-axis. And so in our left-hand uh, scatter plot, we have imaginative uh, listed on the x-axis and broad interests listed on the y-axis. And so this is the data from about 10 subjects. And so, for example, do I have access to a pointer? I think so. Nope. No pointer there. Yeah. Yeah, I do. How cool. Okay, so uh, this person here, they scored a 2 on imaginative and a 3 on broad interests. 
and that's what each one of these dots indicate one person score uh, on uh, these two variables this person here got a five on imaginative and a four on broad interests and these are items from the big five and so as you can imagine if you're rating yourself on you know how imaginative you are and how broad interest you are uh, these two ideas about if you're imaginative you probably have broad interests uh, these should probably uh, be positively correlated that is as one variable goes up the other variable goes up and we see here that if we draw an imaginary line through all these dots this is a positively sloped line and indeed as your ratings of yourself on imaginative go up, your ratings of yourself on broad interests go up. So this is a positive relationship. Uh, here we have a scatter plot of imaginative versus hardworking. And there really is no relationship, conceptual relationship, between these two variables. Uh, if you're an imaginative person, uh, you may rate yourself as, hard, as not very hardworking or very hardworking. So this cloud of dots here, this is indicating a close to zero correlation coefficient, no relationship. And so that's the basics of correlations. Now let's take a look at what they look like in research articles. And this is the data table of correlations from uh, the article that I was uh, you know, uh, discussing earlier. And pretty easy to read because if you look up here, means, standard deviations, chrome back alphas, and Pearson correlations. And so down here it says up, oh, mean, standard deviation, Pearson correlation. And the way that we do this is, let's go back to this. So extroversion is number one. And so here, number one, column number one, these are extroversion scores. Uh, extroversion, of course, correlates perfectly with itself, so it'd be number one. We don't list that because everybody knows what that is. And so here we have uh, the correlation between number one extroversion and neuroticism is minus 0.42. And between openness and number one uh, extroversion is 0.22. And then down here at the bottom, because this is number one, this is the mean standard deviation and the uh, uh, Chromeback alpha of uh, number one, which is extroversion. And we see that here. So reading the table and uh, taking a look at the titles will help you understand what's going on. Okay, so a little quiz. What is the mean standard deviation and Chromeback alpha for openness? So you can uh, stop the video and go back to the table and take a look at that and figure out what's the mean standard deviation and Chromeback alpha for openness. And so hopefully you did that because the quizzes won't help you if you don't. Openness is number three, so we go to column number three and the mean standard deviation and Chromeback Alpha for openness, the mean is 24.79, standard deviation 4.8, and the alpha is 0.72. And then looking at this again, I could ask you, what is the correlation between posting about social activities and extroversion? And then I'm going to ask you to evaluate that correlation. I want you to find that number, but then tell me what that number means in terms of the sign of that correlation and the size of that correlation. And so hopefully uh, you stop to go back and do that, but extroversion is number one, social activity is down here number eight, so I follow this here, and it's 0.24, so the correlation is 0.24. Bolded values are significant at P.01, so that means it's statistically significant. It's positive, and then the size is moderate. So this is a moderately positive relationship, uh, which is statistically significant. And this is just summing up what I just said. It's statistically significant, moderate strength, and it's positive. 
So as extroversion rises, so does posting about social activities. Okay, so as a quiz, what is the correlation between conscientiousness and self-esteem? And again, evaluate that correlation. So you want to stop the video and go back and look at the earlier screen and find that information. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you what the number is because I want you to go find it because that's easy. Uh, but I will tell you what the evaluation is. It's a positive, it's a strong correlation, and it's statistically significant. All right, and so that's it for quasi uh, experiments and quasi IVs. And here's your study guide for the exam and the quizzes. Uh, know what the definition of an experiment is, but hopefully you should know that from previous uh, you know, videos. Uh, you know, what's the definition of a quasi experiment? What are the names of variables now? Uh, what's Pearson's R? Define it. And what, is, what are its rubrics? And you should be able to read a correlation table and interpret Pearson's values, Pearson's R values. All right, bye-bye.